Hello, everybody, and welcome. Hey there. Let's see if I could, um, as always, it's good to get a thumbs up. Um, just a yes, if you guys can see and hear me okay. Can anybody um, give me a thumbs up on that? Can you, can, can you see and hear me okay today? Hey, everybody. Good to see you guys again. Good to hang with you. I know uh, some of you are live today and some of you watch the replay of the video. So thanks for hanging out with us live today. Martin Davis, I know you're here. I heard you're going to be here for the first 30 minutes or so. And hopefully you'll be able to watch the replay afterwards. So what's up to you? But if anybody's on there, oh, good. Good. You guys seem like you can hear and see. Okay. Priscilla, good to see you. Priscilla, Lily. Boss Bernay, Fruchtsiga, I know you. All right, so cool. Hope you guys are doing well. How are you guys doing? Okay, I hope. I uh, look forward to hanging with you in a little bit with some um, Q&A. And I'm excited to talk about uh, this topic this week. It's a topic that a lot of you have requested over the weeks and months. What are the first steps when you get an audition uh, to ultimately guarantee a win, whether it's on tape, virtually, in person, etc.? cetera? Uh, so welcome, everybody. And uh, so we're going to show you the first key steps to nail your audition. And again, a special thank you to the team at Backstage for doing this series and inviting me to speak with you um, uh, every other week. Uh, many of you guys know I've been collaborating with Backstage for years and all the articles are archived and available to read on Backstage as well as all the videos on Backstage's YouTube. For those that don't know me, my name is Joseph Perlman and at my studio, Perlman Acting Academy, we help actors launch their careers faster and reach Oscar level performances on set. And one of the things that we believe at my studio is that you can launch your career faster and with less effort when you're lit up with fun. And uh, we have private coaching and Zoom classes from Hollywood to anywhere in the world. So wherever you guys are at, you can come um, take our classes, attend a free audit, come and watch. And uh, you guys are all invited to actually come watch the acting breakthroughs and transformations in our classes. And you can just go to, um, uh, my website, www.josephperlman, uh, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. Uh, go to the contact form and request an audit. And what you're going to be watching in the audit is we're working with incredible actors from beginner to celebrity level, some uh, series leads on shows, actors who have booked 27 feature films in a year, and we're working them, working with them on currently casting major film and TV auditions, scene study for booked roles, how to guarantee a win on their auditions, ultimately to make the fun and brave choices um, to get wins both in the audition room and on set. And you can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter uh, at Joseph Perlman to get free acting and career tips. So welcome again. I know some of you guys are just coming up online right now. It's a thrill to hang with you guys every other week. Know that we're going to have a conversation in a little bit. I hope you guys are feeling awesome. Um, I always I say this all the time, but um, how you feel now is what you're going to get tomorrow in an hour tomorrow uh, next week. So I want you guys to feel awesome. In a lot of the videos, we we talk about how to flip that switch and feel awesome. But this one is going to be a little different today. I wanted to do this because. I think we make ourselves a little crazy sometimes when we get an audition or even when we get a booked role. You can even apply this, what we're going to talk about, to getting a booked role. And I don't want you guys, uh, I don't want you to make yourselves crazy. Um, every part of this process can and should be buttloads of fun. Um, so I don't want you to make yourself crazy with any of this. It should be fun and easy. And I'm going to give you some practicable easy ways to just jump right into your audition. I'm going to start with this. So always remember rule number one 
of any audition scenario is this. Rule number one. Um, I'm excited that you're here, Edie. Thanks for being here. I'm excited as well, too. Rule number one. Don't guess what they are looking for. Assume you are who they are looking for and bring yourself to the piece with a fun, brave, and dangerous choice. And I've talked about how to do that on, on past videos. Don't guess what they are looking for. Anybody know why we don't want to guess what they are looking for? Casting, production. Why do we not want to guess what they are looking for? Anybody have any suggestions or answers to that? Hang, hang with me a little bit here. What do you think? They don't know what they're looking for. That's why they're having the audition. Or sometimes they have a vague inclination. Exactly. They don't know themselves, uh, Vrod 1169 Hey. Hey there, Jonathan. They don't know what they're looking for. They're looking for someone to show them what they didn't know they wanted yet. It's that beautiful quote from Dion of Reland, who is one of the... Um, most important former editors of Vogue. She said, I wanted to show people what they didn't know they wanted yet. Um, they don't know what they're looking for. And um, we never want to guess. You're just going to be guessing at a needle in a, in a haystack. Think of it like relationships or dating. Um, it's not attractive for someone to try to guess or figure out what you want. It's your job to be the solution to a problem and to deliver it to them on a silver platter and to enter and exit gracefully. So don't guess what they're looking for. Assume you are who they're looking for and bring yourself to the piece with fun and brave choices. So here are some of the first key things I highly recommend and encourage you to do when getting an audition. And by the way, congratulations. And you don't have to get an audition to do this. You can grab um, you can grab a scene, you can grab some currently casting sides, you can grab a past audition, you can do it with a booked role. So don't just think you have to wait to do this in for you know with an audition. Just start doing it with any scene. It doesn't matter. Realize the first thing you need to do is to realize that every moment of this process can and should be fun. At no point should it feel painful or like torture or like as my friend Eugene Simon, who's um, spent six years on Game of Thrones playing Lancel Lannister, says, when I get a 16-pager on Friday that's due Saturday, I feel like I'm rage taping. No! If you get a 16-pager or a 20-pager, you guys, it can be fun. It does not have to be torture. So take a breath and relax. Remember, again, you can... You can do anything, but you can get your careers launched faster. You can reach Oscar level performances. You can make choices that guarantee a win in the audition room um, with less effort when you're lit up with fun. So next step, immediately let go of any ideas or thoughts about who this person is or how to play them, okay? Clear your head of them. It's important to approach this process with a blank mind because we don't want to get stuck on an idea in our head before we discover who he or she is, okay? So let go of any ideas about who this person is or how to play them. Clear your head of them. Why? Why should we clear our head of them? Why should we not think of ideas? Because you'll never be able to fit your ideas about the character into the beautiful and expansive things that you ultimately discover and create. Again, you're not gonna be able to fit the ideas about the character into the beautiful things you ultimately discover and create. When you finally find that hook, discover that hook, um, and, I, and I discussed that in depth uh, in the video uh, that I did a couple of weeks ago, this acting tool will change your life forever. That's the title of the video. When you discover your best choices, you're always, the actors that I work with always say this, whoa, it was totally different than I ever thought it was going to be. It wasn't at all what I thought it was going to be. It was better. And guess what? That's what the people making the final casting decisions on your pieces, the network executives, the producers, um, 
casting directors, but it's the network execs and the producers that make the final casting decisions. They're going to say, whoa, I never saw it like that. This piece that I wrote, this piece that we're doing is better than I ever thought it was going to be. Um, so yeah, so it's important to approach the process again with a blank mind um, to be filled in as you go on the road, as you go on this discovery. Remember Bob Dylan's quote? I've mentioned it a few times. Bob Dylan said something really cool. He said, you guys, he said this. He said, an artist has to be careful never really to arrive at a place where he or she feels like they're at somewhere. He said, you always have to be in this place of becoming. And as long as you stay in this place of becoming, you'll always be okay. You're going to always be okay. So never really to arrive at a place. So don't try to arrive at an idea or an emotional destination. It's got to be in this place of um, becoming, this place of discovery. And um, I thought those were beautiful words. So, yeah. So approach the process with a blank mind to be filled in as you discover. And I've mentioned it many times. Your greatest winning choices are always discovered out loud rather than figured out in your head. And I've used many examples, and specifically Joaquin Phoenix in preparing for the Joker, how he had an idea of who this guy was in his head. And he executed that head idea for a couple of weeks and then had to scrap all the footage because what he was discovering was so much more awesome than the idea in his head. So your greatest winning choices are discovered out loud. Now, next, read all audition instructions, okay? First, read all the instructions because you don't wanna do work that you don't have to do. I think what's really fun in this process, you guys, with the acting and the career, is to clear your desk of all the stuff that you don't need to do. Make it easier for yourself, okay? How to have impact without effort. As Seth Godin says, one of my favorite self-help authors, he says, effort isn't the point, impact is. If you solve a problem in three minutes or three seconds, but have the guts to share it, it's art. And if you've, and if you've moved 10,000 pounds of granite, sorry for your calluses, but you haven't made art, at least, art, at least not art that, that you know, is going to have impact. So read all the audition instructions, the taping instructions, the slating instructions, which scenes to do. You don't want to prepare scenes that you don't have to do. Read the instructions. It is very important. There's going to be specific instructions potentially related to framing, um, uh, file extensions, uh, how to send the audition. Read those instructions um, because th those instructions are, are, are vital. And remember, your character descriptions and stage slash action directions are never for you to obey. So don't get stuck on them. So when you read your character description and those scene directions or stage, uh, stage directions, or, or as they're called action directions sometimes in a script, um, they're not for you to obey. Those were never what you were supposed to do. Why? Why were they never what you're supposed to do is these character descriptions, you guys, are often written either by casting or breakdown services. The people that create the breakdowns for casting deliver it to the reps. They're created by these people to give you an understanding of the world of the piece, okay? I repeat, they are never your acting instructions. If you obey them or follow them, they're going to lead to the, to the same choices that everybody's going to make, to the obvious or cliche choices. So don't get stuck on them. Um, okay, character description, scene directions, do not obey them, but don't ignore them either. They're not to be ignored. It's information to be considered. It's information to be fed into the discovery, but they are never your marching orders, okay? Next, read the script. If it's the whole script you have, read the whole script. If it's the sides, read the sides. And I encourage you not to read it in your head, but to read it out loud. Think of it like this. Anytime you're talking or reading out loud in acting, um, it's like work in the bank you're going to be getting something that you can ultimately live off the interest of. It's like flying hours. The more you talk her out loud, the more you read the piece out loud, it's like 
the more you're going to bring her up through you, bring him up through you. Um, and it is like flying hours uh, with him or her in you. So read the script and read it out loud. And this is important. And um, and I'm please do write down your questions because we're going to hang in a Q&A in a little bit. I'm going to want to hear your questions about this. Don't judge the writing, okay? That's a big thing. Can't tell you how many wonderful people and friends, clients I've worked with over the years who come in and they start disparaging on and throwing the writing under the bus. And it might not be perfect or the best piece of writing ever, but it certainly wasn't the crap that they thought it was. Um, don't throw the writing under the bus until you've worked through it. That being said, if it's riddled with typos, if it's, um, you know, if it's simply not riddle, uh, uh, written well, um, spelling mistakes, et cetera, then I would maybe be concerned um, about working on a project like that because you're there, someone's showing you what you're getting into. So don't judge the writing, um, you know, unless there's something drastically wrong. Um, it just doesn't make sense or it's riddled with typos, et cetera. Research your material. I was having a wonderful conversation um, with uh, one of my advanced classes yesterday, and we were all talking, they were speaking about what are some of their important first steps. Um, and uh, one of our wonderful actors, Marissa, uh, said, um, research your material, understand the world, okay? Understand the style of the piece. You may not know what it is if it's a pilot, um, but you can do a little research on it. There might be um, something in the trades about the piece. If you're auditioning for a specific show, watch it. Watch a little bit of it so you can understand the world of the piece, okay? How people behave. It's really important to understand the world um, so you can be in accord with that world. Think of it as what's the structure that you get to go crazy inside? What's the structure that you got to go nuts in? What's the structure that you're playing inside? So, so do your research and it doesn't have to be painful. It can be a real quick, quick type of research where you look it up, get a sense of um, what style it is um, or watch a little bit of it. It's really important. Here's some examples. And then we need to identify what it is as if to say, what are you? Is it film? Is it TV? Is it theater? Is it a commercial? Is it a, is it a piece of motion capture? Is it a, a VR, virtual reality? Is it, a, is it an industrial? Um, what is it? And then we need to start to dial it in further, okay? Um, what style is it? is? Is it comedy? Is it drama? Romantic comedy, sci-fi, fantasy? Is it a period piece? Is it a future genre, et cetera? Is it a zombie apocalypse type of thing um, with multiple third realities? Um, you want to ask, okay, what platform is it? Is it feature film? Is it an indie film? Is it, is it a big budget feature? Um, is it a student film? Is it broadcast network? If it's TV, is it cable, streaming, motion capture, virtual reality? Um, and if it's TV, what style is it? Is it drama? Is it sitcom? Is it episodic? Um, if it's a sitcom, you guys, is it multi-camera, single camera? Is it a hybrid? Um, if it's not a sitcom, is it an episodic, a procedural, a limited series, a movie of the week? You get it because all of these styles have a different approach to the acting. As an example, I'll break a little bit of it down because it, I don't want it to be dizzying. Let's say it's a sitcom. Um, typically, if it's double spaced, if it's written double spaced on a, on a studio draft, it's a multi-camera. If it's a multi-camera, it's the acting style is closer to theater, okay? I describe it as lifted jokes, grounded emotions, bigger, faster, louder, funnier. One of my friends, uh, multi-camera director Andy Cadiff, uh, directed almost every episode of um, Home Improvement, um, Spin City, um, describes it as Mick Theater, multi-camera the style, Mick Theater. If it's single camera, it's more grounded. That's single spaced. It's more grounded, um, grounded emotions, grounded jokes, people as open books for the dialogue to be funny. If it's a hybrid, 
which you'll find by doing a little bit of research. If it's a hybrid, then it's shot like a single camera, but you need to know the acting is like a multi-camera. If it's um, motion capture, then it's very important that you are physically more demonstrative, that you are bigger, almost more theatrical in your body to paint a visu visual picture. Same with virtual reality. It's also very physical and in your body, except it's like theater in the round. It's like a 360 degree performance where you're also throwing it into your body in a really big, bold way um, and using the entire space, sort of like theater in the round. So it's really important to know these different styles. And so drama, um, it's a sitcom, it's an episodic, uh, multi-camera, single camera, hybrid, et cetera. Yeah, so identify the piece. Um, and how do you identify the pieces? Be familiar with what's out there, you know, do your research, watch stuff that's on, understand the difference in styles as well. And again, just observe, um, let go of ideas in everything that you do, even when you're identifying the style, you guys, you wanna talk it out loud. You never want to have stuff cooking in your head. So don't be afraid to speak it out loud. Get into a space where you feel comfortable to start talking. Next, you're going to read the script out loud with another person. Um, it's the easiest time in the world ever to connect with somebody virtually if there's you don't have somebody uh, you know in your household uh, to do it for 10 minutes to read your sides, okay? So you wanna get it up the first time you go into an audition, the first time you come into class, the first time you go on set, shouldn't be the first time you read your piece out loud with another person. So grab somebody. Um, don't demand too much of their time. You can do it in about 10, 15, 20 minutes or so and read it out loud. How do you read? Read in neutral, okay? Not robotically, but read the piece when you first read it out loud as if you're playing yourself, okay? Don't make any line readings out of it. Don't put your finger down on the lines, okay? Um, just speak the lines uh, the way you would, okay? Just talk and listen as you. It's as if you're playing yourself and it might freak you out because you're not gonna feel like you're doing any acting, but you want to just read it as yourself. Um, it's really important to resist the temptation to do any acting or executing of any choices at this level, okay? You wanna go for the sheer realism of it. And, and here's the game, okay? The game is to trick your partner so that they don't know whether you're, act, you're, you're speaking the lines or you're actually talking to them. That's how you wanna read it for the first time. And if you're doing it over the phone, you can play that game. So how many times have you guys experienced your partner reading lines to you and you thought they stepped out of the script because it was so real? So you want to go for the scary realness of it, which is the exact technique we wanna do at a style called the table read. Okay, we've talked about the table read is where you book, you book the role, the cast sits down virtually or in person and reads the script, but you don't wanna be pushing hard on your choices. The table read is still an audition. You wanna go for it being scary real. This is one of the coolest things you can do when you first get an audition and getting any sides whatsoever is being scary real. Ben Kingsley, one of my favorite actors. Do you guys like Ben Kingsley too? One of my favorite actors, so many good roles. Sexy Beast was one of my favorite performances. Gandhi, of course. Um, ben Kingsley talks about it like this. He says, when I first get a text, I don't want to impose on it. I don't want to manipulate it into a balloon animal, resist the temptation to tie it into a knot the way that you think it or see it. He said, I want to let it work on me. Okay, so that's why we speak the lines out in neutral, going for the realism of it, because he says, when I let the... When I let the text work on me, it's like I don't do anything. The text starts to work on me. He, he said this. He said it's like whacking a vial of something into your bloodstream. And he said he will literally start shaking with the text. It will start to let the, let the text push you into shape, okay? Don't push the text into shape. Let the text push you into shape. So it's just those words are cool sort of permission from someone like Ben Kingsley to not impose on it, let it work on you. Great, you've read it out loud. Next question is this, 
Um, good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. All that matters is this stuff is useful. Okay. If something isn't useful, then it's not worth our time doing. And I, and I, all I want this to be is useful for you guys. So, and thank you for being here, uh, Vrod1169. And all of you guys who are here right now. Okay, the next thing you need to ask yourself is what is the trap? The cliche choice where the actor obeys the scene directions, the character descriptions, they play the idea of the character. And you think about it like this, you guys. Let's say you're playing a doctor or a lawyer or someone in the military the trap is to play the idea of a doctor, the idea of a lawyer, somebody buttoned up. So you gotta let go of your idea of how to play the role, okay? Um, you can be sure that every actor is gonna go into that scene and play that prefabricated cliche choice, but you're not. You wanna have the attitude with auditions um, is if you're going in there and kicking the reference point away, as if to say, hey, this is not going to go the way you think it's going to go. It's to surprise somebody else. Isn't that like the coolest thing we can do for each other? The, 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 one of the most awesome things we can do personally in relationships as actors is to like surprise other people. Don't you guys like to be surprised? I do. That's why I, I, you know, I watch what I watch. Surprises at the center of everything that we do, I think. So what is the trap, the cliche choice, the obvious choice? But really, what's most important is to say to yourself, how do I not want to do it? I didn't wake up in the morning. I didn't, I wasn't born to, 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 to be an actor to do it the same darn way that everybody else did. What's the boring choice for me? And what you're going to do is you're going to wipe that right off your desk. You're going to clear your desk of how you don't want to play it. And this is a fun thing to do. Because once you clear your desk and your workspace and your headspace and your body emotional space, it creates all this room um, for what you do want, for the game that is fun to come flooding in. Um, so how do you not want to do it? It's now, at this point, it's time to go down the rabbit hole and it's, the, it's time to start the process of finding and distilling your hook. Um, which I've talked about, we've talked about in the recent video called this act, this acting tool will change your life forever. And you guys can watch it on backstage's YouTube channels, how to find that hook. What's that thing that's going to light you up, um, in one second to be emotionally full instead of empty, because the difference between good and great in acting is the ability to start every scene emotionally lit up and full instead of empty or cold, having to warm up as you go. Um, I encourage you, if you haven't yet, to come and watch one of our classes for free. Come to a free audit if you haven't. Anywhere in the world, you guys can be a part of it and watch the actors have that undeniable acting breakthrough transformation where they discover their hook um, every single time they get up. And you guys, can, you guys can reach out through my website to do that. Uh, www.josephperlman.com come and jump in and watch the work because it's on fire these days. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff happening. Um, yeah, and, and the ability to start every scene emotionally activated and lit up instead of empty and to be able to do it in one second. Think of a hook as um, it's the thing that lights you up. It's like a booster rocket that falls off. One of my good friends and actors who I've been working with for years, Steve Holm, describes it as it's your emotional momentum into the scene. The hook is the thing that carries. It's the carrier of intention, objective, emotional preparation. You're feeling for the person. In one second, um, it lights you off. And this is where you can start to make dangerous acting choices. Um, remember, you can never control what people see. As my good friend Alex Ashinger uh, says, actor, uh, producer, writer, coach at the studio, stop controlling what people see. You cannot control what people see. So now is the time to start distilling um, your hook. And throughout all of this, you guys, throughout all of these first steps when getting an audition, it's ever important to talk it out loud. Whenever you find yourself trying to figure something out in your head, stop, get to a space where you're comfortable 
uh, vocalizing because your words create your reality in this work, okay? And you're going to talk and emotionalize yourself into your best choices. Thank you for hearing me out here. I really like to engage with you guys and I wanna, I wanna have a bit of a discussion. Um, I hope this is useful. I think it's gonna, it's gonna make it easier so you don't make yourself crazy uh, when starting these pieces. So anybody have any questions or thoughts on any of the, any of the things that I've been talking about here? These are some of the, I think, the most fun and important first steps when you get an audition. So let's hang for a little bit. Let me know what you guys, uh, let me know what you guys think or if you have any questions. And again, thank you all for hanging out and for watching the replay. If you're watching the replay, um, I want to hang with you. So let's see. Thank you, Navid. If you asked a question earlier in the chat, maybe put it front and center. Um, Cause I'm not going to roll back to the beginning, but let me just see here. Any questions or thoughts? Um, oh, we got V-Rod, all right. Uh, V-Rod1169 says, question, what, uh, V-Rod says, don't mind my question, I don't have a note, okay. What happens when you get an untitled project and essentially have no given style because I've personally had this and found myself spending a lot of time trying to know, okay. If it's not obvious what the style is, um, it's important you read all the directions. If it's come from your reps, my gosh, your reps should be your strategy partners. Uh, the rule is you don't check in every day for a 20 minute conversation, but you don't go weeks without checking in with them. You reach out to see if there's something that you're missing. And if there is legitimately no way, you have no idea what the style is, then you, you take your best guess. You say out loud, I see this like sort of um, a broadcast network drama episodic, or I see this like a dramedy, or I see this like a teen angsty, um, indie film, kind of like a um, Twilight type of thing. So you take your best guess at it. Let's see here. Marie Nicole says, I like to move around and speak my lines out loud. Helps with memory for some reason. Absolutely. Uh, Marie, I think you might like the video I did, How to Memorize Faster with Less Effort. It's on backstage and it's a process of talking it out loud um, to memorize with zero effort automatically. Take a look at that. Let me know what you think of it. Um, FAOS Ironic says, I'm a beginner actor and I'm trying to unlock that side of me to stop caring about what people say or, or, or yeah, this is great. What's really fun is when in class, some of the actors are working on the, the them that's walking in the room, okay? The empowered, confident selves coming into the room. Um, which is really important. You don't want to come into a live audition situation, virtual or in person, jacked up or lit up on your acting preparation because someone's going to miss the interview of you. Um, and I think that's something that we all work through is um, not caring what people think, screwing, screw what people think. You know, it's there's a certain liberation in that um, as if to walk into the room, as my friend Steve Holmes says, is to be the solution to the problem. Here's the solution to the problem. Um, and that's something that we can work through uh, in the work that we do in class. And the actors will often do that. How do you prep for walking in the room as you? Let's see here. Thanks, Navid. I'm glad it's useful. And thank you, Christian Canova. Um, Great job as usual. Thank you. Should I approach drama school auditions the same way as industry auditions? Absolutely, you should approach drama school auditions. And one of the first things you're going to say is, is this a piece of theater? Is it film or TV? If it's a piece of theater, one of the things you need to ask is, well, what size is the theater? Is it a Broadway stage? Is it a, um, we wish Broadway, we wish Broadway back on its feet as soon as possible. Is it a 99-seater, uh, is it off-Broadway? Is it a virtual piece of theater? What is the, um, there's sort of a bubble behind the stage and the bubble, the dome ends behind the last person. You need to make sure that you're communicating and having impact and talking um, to the outer edge of that bubble. And it's breath work. Um, we breathe, we create more room inside of our body you know, for theater and film and TV, create more room. We open our ribs to create more space for air to support the text. So we're always on the supportive breath. 
So it's, it's important to approach it the same way, Christian. Yes. Good. Oh, Marie, cool. Thanks. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed the video. Tink Sky, um, what advice do you have for beginner actors in quarantine? You know what? Here's what I'm going to tell you is that don't let the quarantine fool you. First of all, um, it is not an obstacle to you igniting your career, competing for major roles and getting to be the best actor that you can possibly be. Watch the videos that I've been doing since the beginning of quarantine on backstage. They're all there. Just watch them sequentially or pick the titles that are fun because it's like a, a how-to guide um, to start doing it all on your own. But the first thing I would, rem I, I, Tink, I, I, it's a great question. First thing I would say is get great. Learn to be the best actor that you can possibly do. Find the fun in it. Don't let anybody, as Alan Watts says, steal your watch and sell it back to you. Like, you guys, the most awesome thing about the acting work, if you can find a place, this is what we do at the studio, it's always, the best work is always a journey back to ourselves, not a journey away from ourselves. We're not trying to figure out, um, that we're not playing ourselves, but the best acting is always a journey back to you. It's a journey back to ourselves because when we when we start to, put the focus back on ourselves, that's where we find the most brilliant, you know, that's where we find the most brilliant acting choices um, and get the most awesome results. 90% of the performance, 90% of your success potential, your success potential is your personality, is, the pers is your personality. You already have what it takes. It's like the, in the Wizard of Oz, the, Oz, the ruby slippers. You already have everything it takes. Um, so a lot of the work is sort of just like learning about ourselves. What lights us up is finding ways of relating and identifying. Acting is how you do what you do. And we want to ask ourselves, under what conditions would it be possible to feel this or to do that? And it's an awesome thing to be able to do. It doesn't make you a monster. It doesn't make you a saint. It actually expands you as a human being. Um, watch the videos and get great. That's what I would recommend, Tink. Um, Andrea Sanchez, thank you for being here. I'm 24 and I want to study musical theater. Am I too old? Absolutely not. Do not make age an obstacle to that. 24 is young. Go for it. Um, rock on with, with that. Absolutely, Andrea. Uh, let's see. Um, Boss Bernie, I don't understand the question. A self-tape audition when there are no audition. I don't understand it. Uh, how to feel how to feel the scene, how can I? Um, some of the questions I can't get to because I don't quite understand uh, them, but try to take another stab at them to, to be a little bit more clear. Um, oh, oh, Cindy, good to see you, Cindy. Always great to see you. It's so fun to work with you every week. Cindy says, is it okay, Cindy, um, uh, is it okay to work on stage management and directing and do acting? Absolutely. You know, like do what you love, but just keep in mind, that acting can be a full-time job. So it, it's, it's okay to be interested in all of them, but you wanna clear your space, clear your time, so you can really focus on making each one of them sort of like a full-time job, so you can take in as much of the learning as possible. Yes, but absolutely it's okay. Hey, Vrod 1169 during an audition, how much can you play with the setting in the scene, you're getting off a helicopter that just landed and talking louder, and when do you know if it's too much? This is a great question. In an audition, what you're trying to do is not do the audition version of the scene, you guys. You're trying to show them the on-set version. So it's very important, and I talk about this in other videos, that you need to paint the picture very clearly. Okay, it says I'm getting off a helicopter. Well, then you need to say to yourself, how do I see it? What does it look like for me? And use your body to talk to the eyes of someone that might be listening to your, your coach or your partner or whoever you're doing the work with. Talk to somebody's eyes, not their ears or their intellect to show, don't tell. And then when you think about it, you're getting off a helicopter. Well, are the, are the blades still, I mean, are the, are the rotors still on at full? It's gonna affect the way that you talk. You can't talk like this and be heard under a helicopter. So you want to create realistically by painting with your body. I see the helicopter right there. The rotors are going at full blast. I'm talking to someone over there and I need to bump the volume up. So yes, that's the part of the work where we paint the picture um, with our body. 
to ultimately deliver the performance they're going to get on set. Um, and this is kind of neat is like when, with your partners, both in person and virtually, when you're, when you're reading, don't feel like you're stuck on a mark in an audition. It's okay to lean into it. Try to get yourself in the exact proximity of your partner that you would be with him or her on set. Does that make sense? Yeah. Come and watch one of my classes. You're going to, it's going to open your eyes to all of the possibilities because in this discovery, of painting the picture of where you're at, you're gonna find that third realities emerge. And your winning choice might be a feeling you have for the helicopter, or it might be a feeling you have for planes in the distance, etc. It's a really, really great question. Uh, really, really great, great question, V-Rod. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna make sure I, Coldplay says, with that being, um, uh, Deborah Holtzman says, I love that. Find the fun in it. Love that philosophy for life. Yes, Deborah. If it isn't fun, it isn't working. If it isn't fun, it isn't working. Abir says, how are you supposed to figure out what type of actor you are? You're not supposed to figure out what type of actor you are. That's one of those uh, myths. That's one of those industry myths, those uh, mind viruses. Get off of type, okay? You are this original being that's unlike anybody else. Create the type, create the niche. Don't fall into the trap of, uh, you know, these sort of stale boxes of what you think other people want you packaged as. Create the type, niche yourself, type yourself. Um, you want to be a singularity. What's the thing that you do that nobody else does? And it starts with your personality. And it starts by asking yourself why you do what you do. What are your core beliefs? What gets you out of bed in the morning? What's your why? and start to answer those questions. And then you're gonna discover a type that breaks the mold for everybody else. Um, similar to what uh, Zoe Deschanel did years ago, it was this really fun moment. I've talked about it before, the moment where Zoe, De I, I knew Zoe Deschanel had made it. She came in to um, work on an audition on tape with me years ago and she looked kind of bummed out. I'm like, Zoe, what's up? She's like, yeah. Uh, I haven't worked in a little bit and I just got these. And I'm like, what are these? And she hands them to me. I said, give them, let me see. They were sides. They were, it was a character breakdown. And it says, looking for a Zoe Deschanel type. And she's like, see? I'm like, Zoe, you've made it. You've just shown the industry what they can't live without, that they have to find a sort of copy of it, a second rate version of it, because for whatever reason, you're too expensive or you're booked on something to show somebody what they can't live without that you can't find a copy of, okay? Um, yeah, how are you supposed to, okay, good. Coldplay, with that being, oh my God, so many wonderful questions here coming in. Coldplay, with that being said, my depression is a key factor to my acting. It helps me be able to put myself in very emotional characters, what could be a good way to balance the internal mental stability. Wow, thank you for your bravery, Coldplay's, Coldplay's in, um, in doing that, I really would recommend, there's in no part of the acting process should it be a painful experience. There's a way to work so that every moment of it feels fun, cathartic, alive, invigorated, healing, where you're not cutting yourself apart. Um, I'm trying to think, who was the actress? Um, uh, I can't remember her name, but she she did a the Dancer in the Dark, if anybody can tell me, I'm, I'm blanking on it. Then, phenomenal musician, a dancer in the dark. She played a, played a role and she said it, it was so painful. She never wanted to act, act again because she felt like she was cutting herself apart. And that is never the way that you're supposed to act. And everything, I, I do not wish depression on anybody. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you're going through that and I wish you to be feeling better, but just know that with acting, every part of the process should be invigorated, joy, fun. And I can show you how to do that Come and watch one of the classes, uh, Coldplay's. Come and watch how I'm working with the actors um, to show you that it does not have to be painful or abusive. You can, you can trigger some of the most dangerous performances when you're in this place of fun. So it doesn't have to hurt when you're acting. In fact, I think it can actually help um, with things like depression or anxiety. So please come uh, and check it out and, uh, through the website on the email, okay? Is that cool? Uh, uh, um, and, I, and Michelle Nagy, I just answered that question. Is it wise to consider type? No, it's a false flag in this industry. It's a, 
mind virus in some way. So get off of this whole type thing. It's not a useful thing. Type yourself, niche yourself. Don't go looking uh, for boxes that you can neatly fit into. What's important is to be very clear about which projects excite you, which film projects, producers, production companies, who do you wanna work with? Who would be fun for you to work with? And to know some of the sweet spot projects for yourself, but don't think about that as type, okay? You're gonna create a type and a, a niche that's so original uh, that nobody else can claim it. Okay. Um, hey, Jeremy Jones, I am 14 and just started Zoom online acting classes. Congratulations, Jeremy. Uh, so I was trying to see if I should get my resume now while doing my classes or wait because I wanna be on a Disney channel. Okay, a lot of good things here. First of all, it's important, congratulations on being in a class. Get great, you wanna get great. Yes, it's absolutely important to start thinking about your resume and all of that stuff, but you're doing the best thing that you can possibly do right now, which is getting to be the best actor that you can possibly be. But yes, at any point, even though you're just starting, it's very important to think about um, career stuff. Uh, I do career work with actors. It's called Launch Your Career Program, where we distill uh, the goal is how are you going to sell yourself and how are your reps going to sell you when you pick up the phone and pitch? Because it's a pitch game, not a submission game. Um, and to do that, you need to distill your value proposition. The story that someone's going to say, wow, um, we need someone like you on our team. Tell us more. And then how do you go about not waiting for opportunities, but to reach out and grab it and take a bite out of it? And I talk about that. Um, how to create celebrity level branding in one of the videos recently. I would watch that video. Um, Jeremy, watch the video I did for Backstage, how to create celebrity level branding. I think you'll love it. Uh, cool. Um, Marie Nicole, just being you takes the weight off and helps your performance um, uh, as well as in terms of delivery, tone, et cetera. Sometimes so simple can be so hard at times. Yes, right? The simplest things have the most impact, but it's hard for our mind because our minds are so trained to like maybe suffer with the work. I don't know about you guys, but I went to one of these pressure cooker schools growing up where it's like, if you didn't slave away for eight hours a night on homework, you were bad. You know, that's, pardon my French, that's bullshit. And it never felt right, did it? Um, some of the best pieces of art in the world were created in minutes, blown in the wind, uh, Dylan wrote that in 10 minutes. Taxi Driver was written in uh, two weeks in a car. I heard, I think it was, it was either Breakfast Club or Ferris Bueller's Day Off. John Hughes wrote it over a weekend in three or four days, you guys. Impact versus effort, okay? Working smarter. Beautiful. Um, FAOS Ironic. Is it okay to use your own personal background and past memories to utilize them into your act? Yeah, but you don't have to work at using them because they're right there. All of the things that happen to you are right there, so you can clear it off your desk. It's work you don't have to do. And here's the thing. If you try to go back to a period in your life where you were feeling a certain way, you might feel it, but the meaning of the past has changed. Does that make sense? You're, you may still be similar, but the meaning of the past, we've processed things. So don't try to fit a round peg into a square hole of the past. Um, you can acknowledge it, but everything that happened to you is in your blood, bone, muscle memory. Think of it like Olympic training, you guys. Olympic training over years, months, weeks. By the time you, you run that race in the Olympics or swim that meet, uh, swim, you don't have to do any of it. It's in your muscle memory. So think of it as work already done off your plate. Um, good. Let's see here. Boss Bernay, is it hard to explain over message, but already established TV show is released new season. How would you audition? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is, um, I would recommend how to create celebrity level branding my video uh, a few weeks ago, Boss Brene. I think you'll love it. Um, I want to study acting. Should I get a BA or a BFA? Listen, if the BA or the BFA is an important document for you to receive, that may be an important thing for you to do. But to launch an A-list career, and reach Oscar potential, you do not have to be a BA or a BFA. You can study piecemeal through the best teachers in the world. You can study piecemeal and get to that level. So if the document is important to you, then you can do that. But getting a BA or a BFA um, may be great, uh, but there 
there are many ways to get to the uh, level that you want to get as an actor. And I would clearly define your goals. What are the dreams nobody will judge? Um, so yes, that's my answer to that question. Um, I got a BFA. I thought it was a phenomenal experience, but I learned more, way more, exponentially more after I got that BFA. Um, I happened to be in a good program. I went to uh, a good program. I went to NYU Tisch School of the Arts um, and it set me off on the right path. But that document wasn't important to me. It was the training that's important. And I think that's important with acting. It's not the document that's going to help you get in the door. It's your training and then it's your tenacity and it's your ability to um, pick up a phone and know how to sell yourself um, after that. So let's go to, wow, so many. Yes, FASO Ironic, we offer so many Zoom classes to anywhere in the world you can take them. And so again, I am inviting all of you to attend a free audit in one of our classes. You're gonna watch celebrity level actors um, or beginning level actors getting a workout, an undeniable breakthrough on new, currently casting major feature film and TV auditions or working on scene study as it pertains to an actual booked role. And you can come watch, you can go to the website, www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com, go to the contact form and request a free audit and jump in as soon as tonight. We have a master class tonight where you're gonna, we have one of the actors who's booked about 27 feature film roles uh, in a year, mostly on her own. And you can um, have a conversation with us and, and watch the work. Cool, um, this is great, great, great questions. Let's see, oh, Jose, good to, Jose, hope you're doing well, great to see you. I'm gonna take just another question or two and then we will uh, hopefully go gently into this weekend Thank you guys so much um, for the beautiful uh, love and support, for being here, uh, for, for, for joining me every other week, and, and also for backstage for creating this platform uh, to help you guys. Jose says, hey, Joseph, working with The Hook lately on self-tapes and sometimes still have the challenge of letting go. When I do, it's liberating. At other times, not so much. Hope you're well. Doing great, Jose, and, uh, and um, hope you're well as, hope you're well too. Yeah, I hear you. It's so important when you have that light up to let it go because your training, any part of the process should never be in the final acting. Otherwise it pollutes it. You don't want the acting to smell like training. So it's important to let it go, to have a big, bold, brave hook um, and then let it go and then release it into the piece. The, the disconnect of the booster rocket is so important. Um, so you need to keep working at that. And I can't wait to work with you again, Jose. Um, thank you for the check-in here. This is great. Um, again, apologize, not being able to get to all the comments. I'm so happy you guys wanna, wanna hang. I'll get to maybe a couple more here. Let's see. Um, so maybe just wanna get to some folks that haven't asked questions here. Oh, you're so welcome, FAOS Ironic. My pleasure. Love you guys. I want nothing but the best for you, but mostly I want you all to feel awesome. You have the potential to feel awesome right now um, if you want to reach out and grab it. And I talk about it a lot. Let's see, Abir Khan, what do you think someone should do if they don't live in a big acting place like Los Angeles or New York? I'll tell you, um, nothing, because you're anywhere in the world, wherever you live is never an obstacle to you getting a career off the ground. I talk about it in almost all of the videos and it might be worth its own video. Um, you can launch a high level, highest level acting career from anywhere in the world. You do not have to be in Los Angeles or New York in order to pitch for, compete for, and book roles. And when you book something and you have to go shoot it, they're planes and they go back and forth and you can get on one and do it. But don't let location be an obstacle, you guys. It is not. And it never was. It's just very obvious right now as we're all adapting and looking towards what will be um, your location is never an obstacle. So party on with your career. Watch some of my other videos because I talk about it in depth. Um, so welcome, Laura Marasa. I'm glad it's useful. Um, thank you, Marie Nicole. And we are, yes, we are located out of Los Angeles, but all of our classes are via Zoom to anywhere in the world. We have folks in our classes from um, South Africa, from England, from Maldives, from India. It's everywhere. You can be a part of our live classes via Zoom and it's awesome. And you can also attend a free audit. So come and hang. Um, good. How do you practice acting at home alone? Well, here's the good news. It's free. 
It takes a second to connect with anybody anywhere in the world virtually. You don't have to practice acting by yourself, but there's so much you can do alone. And I just detailed it at, at the beginning of this video. A lot of the stuff you can start to do on your own, talk things out loud, get somebody virtually um, to, to read something with you. All it takes is 10 minutes. You don't have to um, monopolize somebody's time because our time is precious. Um, great. Uh, what camera would you recommend for self tapes, Lily? Um, just any camera that you can find, but any sort of uh, recent smartphone camera is just awesome. You just grab your smartphone, and if it's somewhat recent, within the last sort of five, six years or so, um, use that phone. And it's important to not use the front of the phone, but it's important to use this part of the phone to tape yourself. You want to use that part of the phone. Um, so that's important. Um, so use the back camera of the phone. Hello, I'm gonna, one more question. Tiffany Chan, hello, I'm brand new and I'm auditioning for a student film soon. Congratulations, Tiffany Chan, that is cool. Um, should I be nervous that I have teeth braces? No, absolutely not whatsoever. Uh, I just finished a, you know, a long Invisalign thing and I could care less. Um, they're off right now, it doesn't matter. So don't make it, a, um, don't make it an obstacle whatsoever. Uh, you're so welcome. All right, cool. Good, 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 good. Um, our classes are a couple hours, so hit us up via email. And you guys, this was awesome. And you know, also you can propose some fun ideas. So thank you guys. Be well. Um, it was fun to hang with you guys again. I hope to see you at a free audit. Just reach out. Um, thank you again to the team at Backstage for overseeing this. And I can't wait to hang out with you guys in two weeks. Um, blessings, be well, and until later, you guys. Take care.